introduce our first big talk presenter for today, and that is Skinder Kundal, and he is the British Council Director of Arts, and today his presentation is going to be on the following topic, enabling fertile grounds. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here, everyone. And so I've got about 10, 12 minutes. Um, so a massive thank you to the So Creatives um, conference um, and the final day, especially that it's the International Year of Creative Economy. Uh, a special thanks go out to Ruda Mungofa, um, who is from Stimulus Africa Foundation, and um, also the content committee team that was drawn from the Sub-Saharan African and UK uh, and all the speakers here today and the British Council Arts team, Zimbabwe in particular, Farai and Chippo. So it was a strange destiny that I would end up in the creative industries. Um, it was with the second generation of black and brown diaspora that would guide me and determine life-changing experiences. I literally wandered up and down a hill after completing an engineering degree into one of the UK's most deprived yet culturally rich neighborhoods. I entered and opened a door. Uh, it was, I was drawn into this kind of mystical gravitational force. And it was here that I would volunteer for UK's first South Asian Arts National Festival, which was known as Nottingham Mellor. The festival triggered Mellor festivals across all the major cities in the UK, um, and the very same space, which was an old Victorian damp, dilapidated base, which was dearly loved with root cultures, defining their own creative paths and life experiences and sharing them from African, Caribbean, South Asian cultures, that it would evolve into one of UK's flagship architectural art gem creative hubs known as New Art Exchange, which hosts um, a myriad of arts activities, including Real Creative Futures, which is part of the Big House programme for creative industries. And some of the finest contemporary artists were presenting culturally diverse perspectives within contemporary visual and performing arts. And it was from this volunteering and this emergence that I would return back 16 years later, after being a volunteer in the 90s, to be its inaugural arts director and CEO for a new era and the century. But it's essential to note that all that happened came from the communities and it was driven by their voice, their expression. Now, after a quieter 18 months due to this lockdown and pandemic, I have opened up again and I have began to wander around, especially visiting major cities in the UK, not flying internationally at the moment, um, I've been to Edinburgh, Manchester, Birmingham, Nottingham, London, and I begin to visit art events and performances and exhibitions, meeting creatives face to face. And earlier this week, I was at the Serpentine Gallery, where I was visiting the British Ghanaian lens artist, um, major show, major retrospective by James Garner. And there was a quote in the exhibition, um, in, the, in the exhibition guide, where James reflected on a, another quote, he came across in a magazine and the quote he reflected on was this, a civilization flourishes when men and women plant trees under which they will never sit. And then he interpreted with his own quote and he said, but to me, this is James speaking, but to me, it's not only plants putting, it's not only plants putting some, something in somebody's life a young person's life is the same as planting a tree in that you will not cut and sell during your lifetime and hopefully no one's lifetime. The images of course of the exhibition were um, absolutely inspiring and the quote made me think about what we're all trying to do here. We are in fact, you know, and in effect planting seeds and we are trying to produce these kind of flourishing forests of new trusting and interconnected global generations, creative generations. To plant seeds, we need fertile grounds, but also processes to protect and distribute the crops so nobody goes hungry. For me, 
the creative economy is a continuum of interconnected fertile grounds and variety of seeds. And if we are to be of our time, for our time, then we need to understand what we are talking about here. For example, understanding the moment is key. So how we rebuild during, after, during and after the pandemic, it hasn't gone, that has destroyed lives, livelihoods, but it's also weirdly and paradoxically enabled the acceleration of the digital platform and new ways of working, and also determining in ourselves importance and urgency to rethink failing systems, especially leadership policy, decision making, and the equilibrium of power and those dynamics. And on a personal and singular level, singular level, I think it's about rethinking the particularity of the particle that circulates and circumvents all lands within the central structures and becomes more self-aware with a balanced perspective about life, work, play, and meditative rest. So we can challenge the status quo with a little bit more gusto and direction. Actually, we are all probably particles vibrating away with a frequency, uh, with a gravitational force at play. We all bring distinct fingerprints and identities in an oscillating equation of attractions and distractions. And once we determine our purpose and how it synchronizes with the multitude of trillion billion particles out there, I believe we activate oxygen, like distributing fresh water to keep us bright, alert and alive. Any, econ e any econ e economy for it to survive must be inventive and with a strong soul and narrative at its heart, with an engine style structure neatly tucked under the bonnet, working almost invisibly to service the magic. And the magic being the sheeny shiny vehicle moving in a gorgeous slow motion to a supersonic lightning speed, adjusting with great suspension as the terrain shifts, taking us all on an unforgettably rich journey for our clients, customers, investors, audiences, and beneficiaries. The creative economy is made up of arts organizations, artists, institutions, commercial, and social business enterprises. It is a natural hive of inventive survivors, driven by passions, communicating ideas, stories at the heart of their work and bringing value to our lives, be that entertainment, design, fashion, or meaningful change dealing with critical global challenges. The creative economy is a complex web of specialisms, and it is important that we are inclusive when we talk about it and we speak about it and invest in it and determine policy that enables it to thrive. So when we think about the creative economy, what comes to mind are the kind of components and structures and the types of activities, you know, from advertising, marketing, architecture, craft, design, product, fashion, and graphic design, film, TV, video, radio, animation, special effects, visual effects, photography, creative tech, Museums, libraries, heritage, music, performing arts and visual arts publishing. This is such a powerful mix of ingenious sectors within the family of the creative economy, therefore. Creative industries globally are, are a very powerful force, providing trade, jobs and building ecologies on a local to global level, inclusive of both social and commercial projects. And luckily at British Council, I have a very good research team um, led by Ian Thomas, um, who provides me with some really interesting facts. And I think it's important just to reflect on some of the facts here. They speak for themselves. So the creative economy is one of the global economic success stories in the last 20 years. It generates $2.3 billion. Um, dollars. Actually, no, I'll correct myself, $2,250 billion dollars annually and creates around 30 million jobs. You might want to check those figures, but they do sound extra it's extraordinary. And the creative economy accounts for about 3% of global GDP. Um, Nigeria's film industry, um, often affectionately referred to as Nollywood, accounts for 7.2 billion pounds, around 1.5% of Nigeria's GDP in 2016. Um, Africa's cultural goods sector is estimated to employ uh, about half a million people and generating $4.2 billion 
in revenue on the continent. And much of this currently takes place through the informal economy. So it's, it's really, really important that we understand what that is. Um, I think if you look at some of the kind of stats beyond um, you know, the UK global and home in on say Indonesia, um, we look at you know, the creative economy contributing 7.4% of their nation's GDP, employing around 15% of the workforce. And prior to the pandemic, you know, the creative industries um, was the fastest growing part of the UK economy for sure, um, contributing 101.5 million, sorry, billion pounds to the country's coffers, um, growing at nearly twice the rate of the economy since 2010, that is. Um, so the creative economy is providing to be a powerful emerging economic sector, but you all know all this. It's always good to know it again, having said that, because I think we need to use these stats for delivering um, and determining policy. And so everything we do in the arts contributes to the global creative economy. Um, the specific sort of focus on policy um, in the work that we're doing in British Council um, as part of our um, cultural exchange program. So we have three areas in particular in terms of our global arts strategy. And it's worth understanding and knowing what they are. I won't go into the detail of them, but the three areas cover cultural exchange, creative economy, and global challenges. But the specific policy focus in cultural exchange um, offers um, you know, expertise um, 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 in terms of determining policy and working with expert sector organization in sub-Saharan Africa can, and connecting them with the UK counterparts. We, we learn and rapidly bring and change a dynamic to create a global creative economy that continues to advocate the importance of the creative economy. Um, and by creating these enabling policies with the government and civic leaders across the world, uh, we have seen huge success um, in challenging um, in terms of convincing civic leaders about the value of creative ecologies, industries, and the arts. Um, and there are some really fine examples. So for example, um, a central, you know, with, with the kind of policy influence, we've had a central role in determining in Colombia, the orange economy. This name has been given to the country's creative economy strategy. Um, and here we've initiated uh, a process over a decade ago, employing and building the capacity and connections of key contributors to this economy. Um, it is the, this, this, this employee kind of approach subsequently became the orange economy advisor to the president. And is now he's collaborating with the British government to drive policy formula, formulation delivery. Um, a hugely influential role in building knowledge, capacity, and commitment to the creative economy in Niger has resulted in the country's first creative industries fund and policy change. So the, the list goes on. I won't um, bore you for too long with all the with all the achievements, but it's about the influence here. And it's interesting to see how creative industries has grown and continue to do, to do so. There is, there is much that has been achieved in this, in this wonderful planet. The human species has continued to invent, create and discover, tell and share stories to help engage new generations with intergenerational dialogues, creating new perspectives. We are also aware that the world remains imbalanced and a human intervention has created disrupted ecologies, biologies and ideologies. Um, so wealth distribution and poverty gap continues to grow between the rich and poor, race, class, cultural and caste divides remain hugely problematic. Climate crisis deepens the disruptive growth potential of the emerging global south in particular. Leadership and policy, especially within national municipal governments, struggle to adapt as democracies struggle. All this alongside the trauma of discrimination and prejudice and ingrained historical baggage and behaviors where the world is validation still looks to the West in many ways, but not exclusively as the power dynamics shift. And I sense that here too. In Africa, there is a renaissance in the air, driven by young people with digital technologies, with a growing contributing diaspora, creating exciting opportunities and exchanges. I always remember the Ghana Pavilion at Venice Biennale, where artists from UK diaspora um, and those from Sub-Saharan Africa presented an award-winning pavilion, a demonstration of that kind of collaborative um, refreshment of the of the sector, and you know these kind of established spaces and institutions, rethinking um, 
how they engage with diverse perspectives from the world. But let me just finish with some, some final reflections. As far as the pandemic goes, we are not out of the woods and certainly we have some distance to go to achieve the 2017 UNESCO um, Sustainable Development Goals. And there is much to achieve and we need to enable a fertile soil so that we seed creative nations and sites, communities and organizations that help deliver social change, bring peace, shared and distributed prosper prosperity and a purpose and a deeper meaning to life where we are all happy and engaged. We will forever be answering similar and evolving questions. I'm sure of that, but that is what it is and, and we have to evolve. But that is what makes our human brains tick as, as well. We learn, we evolve and we improve. And realizing the fertile ground means sowing a variety of seeds. And I believe we need the following six pack for core strength as a starter for 10 and discussion perhaps. So number one, a shared vision, a collective consciousness with diverse cultural perspectives at the fore, with a strong and lived values with aspirational core built into it. The second, robust policies and strategies uh, with action plans that are driven by qualitative long-term impact and memorable life-changing experiences and outcomes. The third is about investment that enables creative change, ongoing learning and entrepreneurial and diverse intergenerational leadership um, skills that are multi-sectoral and not an in some exclusive silo. The fourth is about investment and support around risk-taking, experimentation, research evaluation, um, with frameworks for failure, but also frameworks for scaling up where models are working well. The fifth is about thinking long-term, working in decade time cycles with perhaps three-year accelerated portal programs with annual adjustments, reflections, but also celebrations. The sixth, embracing digital technologies as fertile vehicles for collaboration, like, for example, how Edinburgh Book Festival have paved the new way for quality hybrid reality for face-to-face and digital texts and teams coming together. In sub-Saharan South Africa, younger generations are forecast to grow comparable with India, China populations and proportions. The mindset and confidence and creative consciousness through education, technology and modernity is unlocking new aspirations and perspectives that counter old narratives giving birth to what Professor Felwyn Saar refers to as the African state of mind. It is this distinct new and style and value system that I believe strengthens what happens next in the creative economy. So we can build collaborative and trusting partnerships and friendships to design and co-design and not be designed by top-down hierarchical hegemonies. In Sub-Saharan Africa, this is an exciting moment as younger generations now build the future in a dynamic yet vulnerable planet to see through an African Renaissance. If these four are like the So Created Conference can shift municipal, national, regional, global policy and inspire vision, ideas and discuss and determine new ways forward in an interconnected way, we can and will create a sustainable future of conscious, creative, collaborative citizens who balance commercial gains and social issues interlocked with compassionate and kinder value systems. So let's enable a new hybrid, culturally nuanced, collaborative, future fertile soil, where we produce the long-term utopian ideal, the perfect planet, and the African dream will be realized. I am absolutely sure of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very, very much um, for your very insightful um, um, lessons that you've given us, Skinda. Um, I know that there are a couple of people that have got some comments um, or questions. For the purposes of time, if you've got any questions, um, please can you either raise your hand or can you type it um, in the chat section and I'll read it out. Um, there is a comment that has been shared, Skinda, and it is from Cloud. 
Um, and he says, incredible how wide ranging the creative economy is. Thanks for reminding us of that. We must remember the power and potential of the sector we are operating in. Um, and I must say, I agree with McLeod. I think um, a lot of the times we, we operate in silos and we think that we are part of this specific community without realizing that we feed to a, a completely um, bigger ecosystem. And I think one of the things that platforms like So Creative, in particular, the digital meetups has helped us realize um, is that we actually need each other more than we realize. Um, so I'll just pose my first question because I know that we do um, have another opportunity for questions um, throughout the round table. But my question is, um, from when you started um, in, in, in the creative economy to where we are now, um, what, is, what is one of the things that you're most proud of, the work that you've, that you've been a part of? What, is, what are you most proud of um, in the work that you have done so far? in terms of how we're moving um, in, in the creative economy, Skinda? Yeah, I, I think there's there's so many great examples, but I think the, yeah. big, the big shift for me is um, how, we, how we influence the influencers yeah. and the investors to determine policy that's going to transform um, a multitude of, of lives. And I believe that, you know, when we make significant change, it comes from root community that's moving at a speed um, with urgency. Right. Um, and when the two combine, so the policy that's designed and the root community, that's where we see um, a massive sort of, you know, um, change, where whereby we can we can cluster critical mass together to create these um, substantial shifts. So when we're talking about, you know, some of the kind of influences that we have on, on various governments, I think they're the, they're the big things. So when, when you shift municipal policy, regional policy, national policy, international global policy, um, and it starts to filter, but it's not filtering from top down. It's been determined in this kind of circular structure. That's when it's at its best. And that circular structure is something that, then, that sort of swirls around and you connect and intersect according to the terrain you're in, rather than it being dropped onto somebody. I think that's where we see that kind of collaboration of co-design being determined. And you know the energy of leadership, policy, um, and entrepreneurial spirit is, the, is, is I think the key thing. Um, so when you ask about, you know, is there one example? Well, there, it's 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 more the kind of concept and framework um, of that creates those myriad examples because there are so many to to reflect on. And on a personal level, I would say that, you know, um, if I was to look back, you know, in my own personal life, um, to see the substantial shift of a neighbourhood in, say, Ice and Green, that came out of a struggle of you know, um, uprisings, some people call them riots, um, vandalism, you know, there was a lot going on. If you look at those communities who were in the kind of a press state, they gathered together to create and transform and create something. And it was driven on their terms. Um, and those negotiations of shifting, changing perspectives determined a dream that came true. And I noticed in the video, it's, it says the Africa we dream to be. Well, it, it, it won't come from, from waiting, and, but it won't wait. It won't happen by seeking it either, weirdly, but it will happen from, from within um, and everything else will be sought as a consequence. So there, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of kind of um, philosophical perspective to success. Sure. But I think it's the kind of deeper principles of purpose, value systems, mm. um, and having um, this kind of co-design, collaborative, trusting approach that enables that change to take place. Mm, Long answer, sorry. <laughs> you only wanted one well, example. 
Well, long but very um, important response. I think ultimately when, when we put together what it is that we need to work on, it starts obviously internally um, across the board because if we look at how we're able to influence policy, municipal, and, and, and as we build up, it's around what are the shared values that we have and if the values that we prioritize aren't what is manifesting in our communities, what are we doing in our individual capacities to be able to, you know, sow those seeds that can have the mindset shift, isn't it? Um, but I am going to have to just read a couple more comments because I know that we, we have um, the round table coming up. Yeah. Um, Farai Afro Vulture says, wow, thank you for reminding and reigniting us the value and magic of the creative economy and placing humanity in it all. Um, I know one of the things that I was trying to scribble down as you were speaking were the six points that you put across. Could you please just give us a, a recap of, of those? Because I know that I'm not the only one that, that needs to rewrite the remain of those. If you could just repeat those, please, Skinda. I will, I'll, I will drop them in the chat as well, but I mean, the, critically okay, they are, thank you. Uh, you, you know, and, and it's a nice comment about humanity, placing that at the middle of it. I just feel that the last 21 years, um, although it's been progressive, it's also been disastrous. And I, and I think um, the disastrous element to it comes from how political leadership works, but also how leadership works and how enterprise works and how things need to change. And so my six pack is based on the theory of Bruce Lee, <laughs> you know, or, or martial arts, that you know, the heart of any fluid body in battle, you need to have a core strength. The core strength needs to be seen. You know, it needs to be symmetrical, but it needs to be agile. Um, so if it's hit hard, it can bend and flex and not shatter. So that's why the six pack is my kind of way forward. And so I try to work in sixes, threes and sixes actually. Um, and anyway, here they are again. So the first was a shared vision. So this is about a shared vision and a collective consciousness with diverse cultural perspectives at the fore. Really important. Um, it cannot be monocultural or monodynamic. It needs to be multidynamic. Um, and it needs to have the strong and lived value system <laughs> with aspirational or built into it. So that's the first one. Second one is about robust policy. The third one, which I won't go into, into which is about long term impacts. The third one was around investment that enables creative change ongoing learning and entrepreneurial and diverse intergenerational leadership skills that are multi-sectoral and they are not in an exclusive silo. Um, the third, fourth one, sorry, is an investment in risk-taking and experimentation, research and evaluation. I really believe in that. We need to have frameworks that uh, allow us to fail, but also allow us to scale up. So we, we're not scared of messing it up. We are bold and courageous in trying things out. I think most entrepreneurs um, and creatives work in that style. You know, things don't work out, um, they start again, they, they, you know, but they learn and they evolve. I think the other thing is about thinking long-term, the fifth one. So my, my whole thing is about working in decades um, um, and having these kind of three-year cycles within those decades and allowing a one-year breather, I guess, within the 10 years, if you've got three, three, three. There's three-year programs of these kind of accelerated portals for change, um, which have annual adjustments built in, or regular adjust adjustments and reflections, but also celebrations. And I think that's really important because when we come together, I know it's a big sub-Saharan African thing, you know, about energizing the kind of um, body through um, being together, you know, and together we go far, African proverb in a sense. Um, and the final, final six pack, to make the six pack is embracing digital technologies as fertile vehicles for collaboration. Um, I just recently went to Edinburgh Book Festival. I was really blown away by my tour. Um, they shared with me how they are dealing with the new world. So face-to-face, -face, audiences outside watching a big screen, and then um, participants and beneficiaries and audiences worldwide contributing all in the same moment 
Um, but to do that behind the scenes was an incredible range of technology and specialists that are completely invisible under the bonnet. You know, it's like a, it's like a beautiful vehicle. What we see is the sheeny, shiny shape of an Aston Martin flying past us. It looks gorgeous for sure. Maybe not, you're not into that stuff, but whatever it is, whatever you're into, you know, it's they've made in what, what seems so complicated, invisible. And what you experience is something hybrid. So somebody can participate from, from Kinshasa to Rio to, you know, Mumbai, um, uh, wherever you are in the world, you can, you can, be, you can be involved. And you can be on site and you don't need to be in the auditorium. You could be set outside. So I think this kind of thing about embracing digital technology in clever ways is, has, is, is one of the big things right now. Um, and the fact that we are here today um, sharing knowledge and experiencing each other's company, it's not the same, I know. It's not the same of me being in the room with you, um, you know, bumping into each other, embracing, kissing, shaking hands, all the stuff that we can't do now. Um, these are important things that make us human. And I think that thing about placing humanity um, into the artificial intelligence and digital spectrum is really important. Um, so there's there's a six pack. But I'll, I'll try and see if I can work out how to drop this into the chat. Um, so you, you, can, you can take it, do whatever you want with it. Um, but I think it's a space not to define, a, it's a space for discourse. You know, this is by no means um, mm -hmm. you know, the final say on anything. Um, I think in the end, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about um, us finding our own six packs. Yeah.